In this video, we're going to join two tables together, the employees table and the cars table, and we'll see the different types of joins that we can use. Hello, my name is Philip Burton from filecats.co.uk. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got an employees table with employee number, name, country, and car number. Not everybody drives a car, and some of the cars, more than one employee has access to. So here are the cars and you can see the color and the date purchased. So what I can do, I can write a select statement. So I've written this, which gives employee number, employee name, employee country, car number, and color. So have a look at some of my other videos if you want to look at how to create select statements, select and from. So a couple of things that we're going to have a look at here. First of all, I've put e dot car number. Why is that? Well, there are two car numbers, one in employee and one in cars. So the computer won't know which one I'm talking about. So I've got to say it's this one to do with employees. And I've said from employees as E. So that means now the employee table is just referred to as E. So I can put E dot car number. Secondly, I have said color as car color. So I've got a column here called color, but I want to say this refers to the car, so I've changed the name. I've put an alias, so that's what the as is. The as is actually optional. I could just put color space car color, but for me, that looks like have I made a mistake? Should there be a comma there, for instance? So if you put the word as, then I know I'm meant to do that. So I'm joining this with cars, and again, I've put an alias, so cars is now called C, and I've said where they join. Well, it's where the car number is the same. So where the car number in table E is equal to the car number in table C. So let's see what happens if I copy this into SQL Server. So first of all, make sure you are in the right database and I'll just paste and execute. And here we can see we've got employees numbers one, two, three. Oh, hang on. I thought we had four employees. What's happened here? Well, this join, the default join, is called an inner join. And if I was to insert the word inner right here, it would give me exactly the same result. So what does this mean? It is giving us all of the rows of E where there is a matching row in C. So employee number four doesn't have a car, so that won't match anything. And car number six has not been used, so that won't match anything. So what we have are these three rows plus any of the rows that match. So that's it. That could be what you want. It might not be what you want. What if you wanted employee number four, even though there is no car? Well, we can change this from an inner join to a left join. What does a left join mean? A left join means give me everything from this first table and give me from the second table where it matches. So give me everything from the first table. So that's these four employees and then give me everything where it matches. So let's go back into SQL server, paste that in, just change it from inner to left. And now we have got the four employees. And so where we don't have anything in this car color, we have no matching cars. We're going to have null. But what if we wanted all of the cars and any employees that match? So let's have a look what that would look like. So it would look like this to start with. So we just need the car and the color. We have the employees. And then we have this employee again, which is going to be car number four, which happens to be blue. So now we have got all of the rows from cars and any employees that match. Now you see car number four is now duplicated because it matches twice. So instead of left, this is a right join because I want all of the rows from cars. So let's have a look at that in action. So let's change left to right. So there we go. So we've got all of the rows and any employees that matches the cars. But hang on. I've got car number null. Why is that? I have car number six here. That's what I want. It's because we are taking the car number from
from the E, the employee table. And there isn't one there, it's blank, it's null. So instead, what I need to do is change that so it comes from the cars table. So I change it from table E to table C. And now we have got car number six. Now I could do this using a left join very easily if I move these two tables locations about. Now I'm saying everything from the first table, which is now the cards. So that, these two queries, they're identical. So if I run both of these queries with cars first with a left join and then cars last or second with a right join, you'll see they give me, if I change this back to C, exactly the same results. It just depends which one goes first. But what if I wanted all employees and all cars? In other words, I want everything from E and from C. Well, that becomes a full join. So now we would have everything from the car table, C, and everything from the employee table, E. So let's have a look at that. I change this now to a full join. We now have all of the employee numbers and all of the cars. There is one other join which is rarely used, but can be quite a mistake to use. It's called a cross join. Now for this, I'm going to cross out the on clause. We don't need it. This will give me all of the employee table and all of the cars table. Unfortunately, what do I mean by that? Well, there are three cars and four employees. So it's going to give me employee number one three times matched to each car. And then it's going to give me employee number two three times matched to each car. Now I've got car number four because that's where what it would got in the employee table. If I was to expand this and said as employee car and then have a car number from the C table, so I need to insert a new column, what we have now is the employee car and the car number 456, 456. So next we would have three more columns here, three more rows. And again, we would have all of the car numbers. And then finally, we would have this one. And even though employee number four, Julia, or Julia, if she's Spanish, she doesn't actually have an employee car, we would still be matching it with all three car numbers. So this is a multiplication effect. So this is what we get with four rows multiplied by three rows. So let's have a look at this. And here we can see all 12 rows. There are very specialist circumstances where you would want to have a look at every row matched with every row in another table. One that comes to mind, suppose I've got an item that was borrowed in the middle of January and returned in the middle of March. I want to know how many days in each month it was. So I might have a table with the months and a table with the items. So I'd be looking at each and going, well, let's have a look at it in relation to January. Let's have a look at it in relation to February. Let's have a look at it in relation to March. Let's have a look at it in relation to April and then go on to the next item. So very specialized. Now there is another way of writing this and that is without the cross join at all. We just put in a comma. So you can see this is quite a mistake to write. You're thinking you can write a join with a comma. You can do, you will get the worst sort of join, a cross join. So let's have a look at these different joins again. First of all, we have got a left join. So a left join is everything from the first table and where it matches in the second. We've got a right join, everything in the second table and where it matches in the first table. We've got an inner join, everything where it matches on both tables. We've got a full join, so everything from the first and everything from the second table 
using this on clause. All four of these use this on clause. And finally, rarely used, we have got this cross join. So the default join, if you don't put any in, is an inner join. Everything from the first and everything from the second, but only where it matches. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're getting to grips with how you can create joins and what the differences between the different types of joins are. If you want some practice on it, if you want some more explanations, then why not join me for one of my courses where we will have a look at joins in more detail with some practice activities. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.